everything you wanted to know about phantom power but were afraid to ask this is the ultimate guide to your mixer setup in this particular episode in five minutes we're going to talk about phantom power everything you want to know and some things you might not even have known to ask so let's get right into it now this is a mixer here of course you're familiar with that because we've talked about this before we're also going to be talking about how this one button here can be anywhere on your mixer it could be over here, it could be over there, it could be one on each side, it could be down at the bottom. But in my case, with this particular Harbinger mixer, it's right up here. 48 volts is what it says. That's my phantom power. Now, when do you need to use it? That's always a question. And should you be afraid about turning it on or if you're getting it on, leaving it on, having it there and going, oh man, it's been on this whole time. It must have did something. Normally, you're not going to see any bad interactions. Now, if you don't need it, of course, turn it off. In my case, I'm using an Audio-Technica AT2040, which happens to be a hypercardioid microphone, which is allowing me to talk into it, and it does require a 48 volt power supply. So that's what's plugged in right here. That's why this is on, and that is why this channel is set up the way it is. So when do you not need it? Well, if you're just running regular dynamic microphones, you don't need it. If we roll back the clock to let's say 1971 and say, hey, I have a ribbon microphone. You better read the manual because if you have phantom power on, you may just damage it. But in this case, when you have a lot of these great new microphones, this happens to be an MPM 3500R from Marantz Professional, it has some built-in features, some technology, electronics, components, stuff that needs to be powered to make this ribbon microphone be as good as it can be. So in this case, it has the ability to increase or decrease the actual dB by 10. And on this side, we actually have a high pass filter because ribbon microphones have a great tendency of sounding awesome, but also have a great tendency of generating a lot more low end than you may want. So in this case, this does need it for all these electronics. And it's also a safe way. If you have something that can be as a manufacturer harmed by 48 volts and they know people randomly turn that on and off without reading any manuals it's better to put safeguards into the product and this way you guarantee that your customer or user will not have an issue with the product because they accidentally turn something on so let's talk about another microphone that is very commonly used now this happens to be an at2020 now this is everybody's favorite microphone to start off with when they're looking for a condenser microphone so if you're going to do any studio work this is one of the most popular microphones to do that regardless if you're doing a podcast or you're singing or you're just basically working on next audible i mean that's what this microphone's for but it requires fancy player because the condenser microphone requires that it's going to take your voice and add energy to it to make it fuller and richer so you can speak from a distance and speak with more depth into the microphone so these guys need phantom power again condenser microphones read them in you're going to see it's right there now, of course, just like the microphone I'm talking to on a hypercardioid, you do get microphones like this as well. This happens to be from Sterling. It is the P30. Now, the P30 from Sterling is a very impressive piece of hardware because inside of this actual dynamic microphone is a micro amplifier. There's a micro mini preamplifier built right in the unit. And you can tell that because, well, when the light's on and off, we're powered up. It needs phantom power to make it work. It even says it right here. Now, why does it do that? So instead of having a microphone that's restricted to just the amount of energy you going right into the microphone is going to happen and give you interaction with the microphone, that phantom power is going to make this supercharged. It's going to be able to pick up more depth, more distance, more range from around it. And it's all directional. It's, it's that hypercardioid direction. So it's very pointed towards you, uh, less around the back, but it's going to be slightly amplified and it's going to sound fuller and richer and more detailed, even though it's a dynamic microphone, just like a sure PG 48 or PGA 48, or even the SM series. These are all dynamic. They don't require any phantom power. Just plug them into anything and they'll just work. That's how they are. That's why these don't need phantom power. And of course, you can buy just regular microphones. Don't need phantom power. But in this case, look at this. This happens to be connected to a wireless system, which normally wouldn't be able to solve our problem. But in this case, this is an X-Vibe. 
and this happens to be not just the U3, but the U3C. And that the reason why I have it here for you, guess what? It has phantom power on it. It has 48 volt and 12 volt settings. So remember, phantom power is not always just 48 volts. It just means that there's hidden power in the system to power up your microphone or your equipment. So there you go, that's phantom power, and you can feel comfortable about using it and when you need it on. So I hope this video helped you out in your ultimate guide to learning everything about mixers. Maybe I'll see you in the next one. Let's say thanks for watching. Bye for now.